Hello and welcome, I'm Kay Spivey. Today is the very first day of the poetry learning series. I'm sure I'll come up with a better name for it at some point, but today we're going to learn about the Almighty Sistina. So Sistina is actually one of my favorite forms of poetry. It is the first form poem that I ever won an award with. It was a very small, like, local county award when I was in high school, but I was very proud of myself. Let's get into it and let's talk a little bit about why most people do not like the Sestina as much as I personally do. The Sestina is a fixed line poem. There are poems where you can kind of fudge the lines a little bit more and there are poems where they really have to stick to a very strict structure. And Sestina is one of those strict structures, but it's a little bit more like loosey-goosey. This is not a sonnet where you have to get your iambic pentameter down and you've got to get the rhyme scheme down. There is no rhyme scheme in Sestina inherently, although you can be a crazy person and put a rhyme scheme in if you're interested in that kind of extra work for yourself. The Sestina dates back to about the 12th century. There was a tru troubadour, troubadour, which is essentially, it's a bard. It's the same kind of concept as a bard. A troubadour named Arnot Daniel is credited as having created the first one. Let's talk about the structure of a Sestina first. Unlike poems that have a rhyme scheme or a very specific like line break pattern or anything, the Sestina is a six verse six line poem with then a envoy, envoy, e-n-v-o-i at the end where it's three lines and it includes the words at the end of the line because in a sestina the words at the end of the line are the most important thing. That is where all of the structure of the sestina comes from is the six words at the end of the lines have a very specific pattern in which they repeat every stanza. So the best way to organize your sestina is to start off by writing down the word scheme. But we'll get to that in a minute. Sestina then, it starts with like A, B, C, D, E, F. And so you take those and it goes in a circle, in like a spiral. If you think, um, if you've ever read Turtles All the Way Down, like thought spirals, that works really well for the Sestina because we are going to be writing in a thought spiral basically. So I'll put up I'll put up the picture. I think Wikipedia actually had a really good picture to show you what the spiral is. Otherwise, if you're confused by it, don't worry. You can do it the way I've always done it. I just copy the scheme and write it out for myself in advance like so. Now the words that you choose are really, really important for the Sestina. You want to choose kind of vibrant nouns. Words that have double or triple meaning are really good choices. If you're choosing like a verb, something that can be a verb or a noun is a better choice. If you're choosing kind of a concept, something that's more of a concrete concept, something like love or a dream or something that's a noun and a concept is a better choice. The more things you can do with a singular word, the better. You don't want to choose unless you're trying to challenge yourself and then better on you. Just know that you're going to have a struggle later on. You're going to get to like the third stanza and cry a little bit. If you want to choose like a very specific word, why was the only thing that popped in my head dragonfly? Dragonfly could be difficult unless you wanted to break it down and take just fly off of the end, which you could be clever and do that, depending. Now, there are people who are more traditionalist with Sestina and people who are less traditionalist with Sestina. In the more traditional, the words that you choose at the end must be the same word, can't pluralize it, can't add anything that's connected to it before or after. It has to be the singular word by itself. And I believe it's iambic. It needs to be an iambic meter. Now for non-traditional, you can fudge it a little more, which I've always felt the English language works best in poetry if you kind of fudge it a little bit more, where you can make a word plural or not plural. You can take something like light or star and make either one of them into starlight, that kind of thing. Or you can take a word like, let's say you chose star and turn it into start with a T on the end or make it scar, changing one letter. That is a less traditional sestina. However, I have seen them done really beautifully in the past and I would not personally fault you for choosing to write a sestina that way, especially if you get yourself into a sticky spot later on in the poem because this is a long poem. 
This is a pretty hefty piece of work. If you get stuck a little bit later and you decide to kind of fudge one of your words, it can work really well. Just know that the elitists on the side of the traditional Sestina will not appreciate it. Okay, so you choose your pool of words. And I would recommend writing yourself down a list of like 10, 12 words that you might be interested in using. Mostly because as you get into it, as you start writing the poem, it still does have to be a poem. Now this is where Sassina gets really tricky. It really, it's a bulky poem and it's intimidating to look at and it's intimidating to start working on. So start with your pool of words. Words that you think are really nice, words that you commonly like to use at the end of the lines. And if you're not the type of poet who kind of aims for the end of lines, like personally, I feel like when you're breaking your lines, the end word should carry a lot of weight because it's the thing that lingers on someone's mind as they're drifting down to the next line to start in. So if the last word is not stronger than the starting word, the line break probably needed to happen in a different place, you know? So if you're really good at breaking on strong words, this might not be as bad of a challenge for you, but we'll get into it. <laughs> you take your pool of words and you can set up your structure. I think this is way easier to number your page ahead of time. Spread yourself out some pages. I used to get just like computer paper when I was in high school and write out everything on the sides of the pages, like two, three pages so I could write it really big. I have crammed everything a bit smaller today because I'm an adult and I don't care about being able to read my own handwriting is what I've discovered. <laughs> write out your entire structure because a sestina is a bit confusing with the word scheme because it's not a rhyme scheme, it's a word scheme. So your first one is gonna be very easy and is gonna set up everything. So write a poem. Write a poem putting your best words on the end of the line. A six line stanza. So I had to change the battery. It has been just god awful gray and rainy today. Like the sun did not rise here in Seattle. It's been so gray and rainy. So I kind of chose a little bit more autumn flavored words, a little bit more gray and rainy words, stuff that I had around me. And so my first stanza then goes like this. As soon as the summer leaves, the gray days roll in with rain so that days may pass without light. Nights will come and go without a star and I will start pouring tea in a deeper mug to keep me warm while I avoid a dream. And so my words then that I chose are leaves for A, rain for B, light for C, star for D, mug for E, which was my challenge word, and dream for F. Once you have that stanza, you're set up. Now you're set up in two different ways. So you're set up with the words you're now stuck with, the words that are going to push you through the rest of the poem. And if it works better for you, you can then just put all of the words in at the end. If it works better for you than putting in the like A, B, C, D and all of that, totally fine. It also sets up a mood. And like I mentioned before with turtles all the way down, because Sestinas really work spiraling and because they go on so long and can become very like trudgy because of the repeated words, they work really well for thought spirals. They work really well for tackling ideas that would kind of spiral anyway, which would be like mental health if you wanted to talk about that. A Sistine is a great form for it. It's a great form for talking about like hopes and dreams because it's something that always cycles back. Anything that you can think of that really like keeps coming back, the same idea over and over again, a Sistine is a great form for it. It's also usually used as kind of a storytelling form where you're moving through some kind of an idea, some kind of a scene. A lot of the classic old Sestinas, like I think Elizabeth Bishop has one that is very much like a scene, watching a person do something. Now one of the things I love about Sestina is that it really helps you to play with sentence structure. So if you noticed, the end of my sentence at the end of that paragraph really didn't end there. It kind of is ready to go on to the next one. I think that's the easiest way to do it for me personally. If you like to have the stanzas contained, total thought, and completely done, I think it's harder in the Sistina form, but I believe in you. One of the things that you'll always keep in mind is that whatever the last word is for one stanza, it is always going to be the first word for the next stanza. The end of the first stanza is F, so F will start off the next stanza. 
And that is always going to be a case. So the last word is always going to link, which is again why these thought spirals are really easy to work with. <laughs> if you have a concept where you're spiraling down, this form really takes that because you're going to be repeating words. You're going to what I'm going to be saying dream again for the last word of the first line of my second stanza. Now just keep in mind, this is not like a completed finished poem. This is just, I wrote a Sestina for this video. I haven't really edited it yet. This is just so I can talk you through. I, I went with the more traditionalist, keeping the exact word on the end. I had a few struggles. If I were to edit this down, it probably would sound much better. So just keep with me because this is a very long form because the words are going to repeat and the word scheme is very complex. There may be some awkward sections. Just bear that in mind as we're heading in. Remember my words are leaves, rain, light, star, mug, and dream. And if you don't like the A, B, C, D, E, F, which I like using because that's what people would use for a rhyme scheme. If we had repeated rhyming words, we would use like A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, or however the rhyme scheme went. I like using those. If numbering one, two, three, four, five, six works better for you, if that's easier to wrap your brain around, go for that. The letters aren't gonna stay for the finished product, so use whatever works best for you. And if writing the word rather than writing a number or a letter works better, absolutely do that. But I will go ahead and read you my Sassina so you can get an idea of how this sounds. I'm not joking when I said the sun just did not rise today. It was so gray and rainy the entire day. So this is not a happy poem it turned out, but we'll just, yeah, I'll just read it. As soon as the summer leaves, the gray days roll in with rain so that days may pass without light. Nights will come and go without a star, and I start pouring tea in a deeper mug to keep me warm while I avoid a dream. It isn't that I'm not sleeping to avoid a dream. The day never changes, darkness never leaves. I never know if there should be tea or coffee in my mug. I count the days by the fall of rain. Mark off the to-do list one by one. I star the boxes one by one, looking for a candle to light as though a tiny flame could be the light that awakens the desire from the dream. But I don't know what I'm chasing or where the North Star might be because the cloud between us never leaves. And if I could, I would blame the rain, but the clouds rise up between clenched hands from my mug. I know why I keep pouring hot water in this mug. I know why I don't bother to turn on the light. The gray days slip down my face like rain, and I think of joy as summer, as a dream, as a temporary moment that always leaves, as a drama in which I never star. In autumn, old memories, a gold star, tunnel back much deeper than my mug. The crunch and flutter of autumn leaves, all soggy and wet up here with no light to burn the edges of the leaves of vibrant red dream. They slide down the gutter with the rain. But I say I don't mind the rain. How can you mind that life, that careless star of life? It brings with it all those rainy days you dream about in the dry Midwestern heat. A deep mug you think will comfort you and bring light back to a heart that summer always leaves. Remember, winter leaves too and takes the rain. Spring comes in light and leaves a star in your eye so that that mug finally seems big enough to carry your dream. Ho ho! So it was a little depressing. And again, there are places where leaves was a really good one because leaves can be so many things. Things can leave, you can leave, leaves can fall. Like leaves was a, was a good one. And then mug and actually dream was hard and star were hard to fit into many places and at first I had thought star and I would kind of change it up I tried to be a little traditionalist so star had to fit in a couple places in an awkward way and then at the end the envoy I don't think I got into enough earlier the three lines need to include all of the words and it should be a double, double, double. So I couldn't find anywhere that really agreed on how you do it. I did A, B, C, D, E, F, because then it 
harkens back to the previous poem and because then because the A is the last one on the previous stanza it fits more nicely into the flow of everything but I've also seen it where you do uh, E C A with <laughs> so it would be E B C D A F you kind of flip them but you do have to have B D F places didn't agree on what the envoy should look like but it has to have all of the words so that two of them are on each line. That's the only thing that everywhere had in common and I liked using A, B, C, D, E, F because it just felt right. What did you think? Do you have any questions? The biggest problem with a sestina is that anything you can change within it is all internal. Like you really can't fudge the end of the lines, which is why wrapping lines and wrapping sentences is the easiest thing you can do. And choosing words that really fit into multiple meanings, multiple usages is the easiest thing you can do with a sestina. You can really make things hard on yourself. And it would be hard to also really try and stick with the I am's for this form as well. And I respect anyone who does it. I did not do it really well with this poem. I have much longer lines and much shorter lines, which I also would try to even out for my own aesthetic. I like it when it looks real smooth. A real like perfect column sestina does look so pleasing to the eye, but it's really hard. And one of the things that you run into with a sestina is that sense of, oop, they just had to force that word in there. And the less you can do that, the better. Sestinas sound best when you aren't constantly like, there's the word again. But it's a form that makes that happen. A lot of the cleverness in writing it is in trying to hide those words. And I think it's a really fun exercise of a poem. I think it makes you think in a totally different way from doing rhyme scheme or from fitting kind of shorter forms. I think because it's so long and really forces you to aim for these specific words that you're kind of getting tired of by six stanzas in, let's be honest. And also to keep up the flow of a poem, to keep up the flow of a story, to keep up the train of thought. It's a challenge and I think this is a really good writing exercise. Whether or not you get something out of it that feels like it actually fits poetry or not, I still think this is a really, really good one for learning how to use the words and how to follow a form and how to continue on a longer train of thought, which can be a little bit hard too, especially we're living in a time where Insta poetry is very, very popular. These like poppy catchy phrases that are so short, they can feel like they mean a lot, but not actually be saying a lot. Learning to stretch out an idea into this much, much longer, heftier form and carry on the entire train so that you forced to flesh out something because there's just so much space to fill is a really good exercise to really get you thinking about like what is important to say and what is actually carrying on this train, what is just dead space. So that was a Sestina we're talking about today. It has been many a year since I last wrote one of these. I was dreading it a little bit and if you're kind of looking at this whole form and everything and dreading it, I challenge you to still write one and I think I'm totally new to Patreon still. I think you can post it down below. If not, please message it to me and I will find a way to put together anyone who posts a poem for this month. If you have a Sestina you'd like to share, I would absolutely love to share it with everybody. I think it would be a lot of fun to see what everyone has written. I will look into this, clean it up, and try and have it down below as well so you can read my Sestina. <laughs> it's still fresh, it's still raw, so don't judge me too hard on it, but I wanted to make sure I had written a full example for you of this long complicated form that I really enjoy and that I hope you will also enjoy and I hope you don't get too caught up in how different a style it is and how kind of ominous <laughs> these repeated words are and I hope you have a lot of fun with it. So that is the end of the video for today. Not sure how to sign off of these so I will say good luck to you and Happy writing, and I hope you really enjoy doing a sestina. Thanks. Bye!